everybody. I'm Sayukta from Beautiful Spotless Skin Team. And I'm sure all of you must be keeping good health. To look beautiful and smart at all times is quest of humans right from the beginning of civilization. Few of the common conditions affecting the look and feel of a person is acne, hyper or hypopigmentation, and even hair loss. Out of these, acne is a big concern. Acne is a very common skin condition that can impact anyone. Whether you are a teenager or an adult, this skin complaint is no stranger. Knowing the various types of acne can actually help you to treat the condition better. Acne vulgaris is a chronic condition affecting more than 85% of adolescents and young adults. It is one of the most common disease affecting humanity and quality of life. It goes be beyond uh, just being a skin ailment to various psychological disorders such as depression, anxiety, stress, and low self-confidence. Hence, it is important to know about the holistic treatment approach for this ailment. Despite its prevalence, few people know that June is Acne Awareness Month. Acne Awareness Month is launched to combat the negative stigma surrounding this very common skin condition and also to be aware of treatment approach for acne management. So let's connect today with our skin expert, Dr. Gokul Naidu, G live from Mysore to talk on types of acne, acne management, and role of sunscreen and acne management. Dr. Gokul Naidu is a consultant dermatologist, cosmetologist, and trichologist. He has his own clinic, Radiance Skin, Hair, and Cosmetology Clinic, Mysore. Also a consultant dermatologist at Kaveri Hospital. Dr. Gokul Naidu has done his MBBS from PES Medical College, Kuppam, Andhra Pradesh. Later, he pursued his post-graduation specialization in DVL from Vaidahi Medical College, Bangalore. Dr. Gokul Naidu is life member of Indian Association of Dermatology, Virology and Leprosy, that is IADBL, and member of Mysuru Dermatology Society, MDS. His key area of interest are acne, eczema, pigmentation, hair, laser, peels, PRP, facial revegetation, etc., etc. He also attended various national and international conferences during post-graduation. He has presented various award papers and posters. A very warm welcome to you, Dr. Gokul Naiduchi. Hello. It's a pleasure to have you with us, Dr. Gokul, and we would, uh, as we are going to discuss about acne management, we would first like to understand what are acne, what are various types of acne lesions. So, when coming to acne, so acne, it's a, uh, like you said, it's a chronic condition. Usually, uh, the teenagers will be most affected. So, as soon as the, uh, uh, the person gets mature, the acne lesion will start erupting. So coming to the causes, it is mainly related to the hormonal. Hormone is mainly related to the hormone. In males, there is a hormone called testosterone. In females, it's, there is a hormone called estrogen. These are the main culprits. So usually what happens means uh, when they, as soon as the person gets mature, these hormones, there will be a little bit elevation. So it will affect the, uh, there is a gland called sebaceous gland. It affects this gland. So this gland, they will start secreting more amount of uh, secretion. It's called sebum. So because of that, this type of acne will acne will usually happen. So coming to the type of types of acne, there are different types of acne. Uh, to put it in a simple words, so there are four types of acne. Initially, it will start as uh, comedones. That is commonly called as whiteheads and blackheads. This is the initial stage. So later it will progress to the, uh, there is something called papules. Papules means usually it will be reduced, reduced and uh, there will be pustules also. So uh, if the patient uh, doesn't like take care of these papules, slowly, slowly it will get turned into nodulocystic. This is the uh, third and fourth stage. So nodulocystic is the most toughest to treat. So uh, the nodulocystic one is the, which one is the, uh, leave, it will leave most of the time, it will be the main culprit to leave marks. So these are the various types of acne. Right. So these types of acne is also the grades of acne or there is a difference between types and grades, doctor? Yeah, these are the different types of acne. In this, uh, yeah, these are the four different types. We can grade it based on the type of the lesions. Okay. okay. And doctor, does specific areas of face uh, mean a specific cause of those acne? Because, uh, you know, many a times we see acne over the jaw lines or on the butterfly areas, etc., etc. So uh, what is that? 
yeah so uh, yeah this is the uh, thing like see uh, most of the females who has got like a pcod problem in the background so they are the one who gets most of the time acne on the jawline so that indicates they have something related to the pcod uh, mm -hmm. overall like sometimes patient may get on the back of the in the chest and the back so it indicates there will be excess sweating or like some kind of pressure so uh, on general over all over the face means it indicates like mainly it is only purely hormonal Maybe it related to the their stress, something like that. So along with that acne, if they have unwanted hairs also on the face, it will go. Uh, it is it indicates that they have some PCOD problem. That is how uh, it indicates various kinds. Okay. Now the thing is, doctor. Earlier we used to think that acne is something that only comes during uh, adolescence or uh, you know during puberty or teenagers are the one who are you know hit mostly by the. Uh, by this uh, problem but now, nowadays we are seeing you know middle-aged people or adults actually going through acne ailments why it's so so yeah uh, uh, previously there was a time like when when they was telling like uh, these acne issues it is related to only adolescent so mm -hmm. nowadays because of the sedentary lifestyle and the food habits now we will see most of the time we see uh, in the age group like 20 to 30 in case I've seen some patient from 30 to 35 also and mm -hmm. sometimes it is called senile comedons which is seen in uh, a patient age uh, more than 40. So there are a certain reason for these kind of changes it's mainly due to sedentary lifestyle and uh, stressful work and uh, food habits like uh, taking more amount of uh, carbohydrates and more, like more amount of sugars. These are the reasons why uh, nowadays we are seeing uh, like patients of uh, 20 to 30 years age, even above 30 also. This is the main reason. Right. And uh, previously we were talking about the grades as well. So what are the grades of acne doctor and what are the treatment options for different grades of acne? So, like I said, uh, there are four types of, uh, four grades of acne. So, initially, we'll start as comedons, that is whiteheads and blackheads. So, for whiteheads and blackheads, as such, uh, we don't go for uh, any tablet or anything. Initially, we try to treat it with some cleanser and uh, some uh, gels, like, uh, for example, clindamycin and adapalene or benzoyl peroxide. So, this will do for comedons. So, coming to second stage, uh, this is called... Uh, Papilla. So in this, what happens, uh, there will be a few pustules also. That means there is some secondary infection also. So that time what we'll do means we'll go for some antibiotic tablets, for example, doxycycline and minoxicillin. So along with that, what we'll do means uh, we'll also we'll include the cleanser and as well as some topical creams, for example, clindamycin and adapalene. So third and fourth, it is called cystilonodic. That is the, I mean, it will be, the acne will be very huge. So that time we cannot treat as such with these uh, antibiotics. So we'll go for the next drug, something called as isotretinoin. So this is the main uh, treatment for like, usually when the patient is in third or fourth grade of the acne. So it will go on. So, so it all depends on the patient also. Sometimes uh, see patient, uh, they want it, uh, they expect the immediate result. That time we'll go like, like, like higher antibiotic or like isotretinoin for that matter. Sometimes a uh, patient is okay, like uh, we'll wait for certain time when they say that will go only with the topical uh, creams as well as uh, certain face wash. Face wash and all, like it depends, like uh, what uh, we will assess them, like uh, what is their skin type. Based on that, we can prescribe according to that, whether uh, they have oiliness or their dry face. Along with these things, uh, we need to add certain moisturizer also and uh, as well as sunscreen. So this is uh, like, uh, this is the treatment protocol. Based on the patient assessment, we'll go according to with that. Uh, doctor, because you just mentioned about moisturizer and sunscreen and because acne is a very common, uh, you know, condition for mostly who have uh, oily skin. Type. Yeah. Now, the thing is, they'll say that I don't need moisturizer, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm already secreting so much of yeah. oil. Yeah. Or why should I layer up my acne with sunscreen? Yeah. So I would like you to shed some more light over the uh, importance of moisturizer and uh, sunscreen in case a person is suffering. So yeah, this is a actually a misconception patient have. So once they secrete more oiliness, like, I mean, their face there, when this, there is more oiliness, they're asking me also like why they want to like, why, why we want to use more moisturizer. What is the point in using moisturizer as well? Like already I'm secreting so much. So thing is, see what happens. There are certain kinds of moisturizer. See, for example, uh, when we uh, start the treatment, there are certain gels, certain creams, which will cause face excessive dryness. 
and even the face wash also for example salicylic acid face wash this face wash and uh, these creams what will happen their face will get more dry so that time uh, it is important like uh, for patient to use moisturizer when we put on certain medication for example like isotretinoin the face will become extreme dry patient will come back like after 3 to 4 days that uh, their face has become extreme dry on that time all this time uh, the moisturizer is very important moisturizer like it depends like a patient uh, i mean there are certain kinds of moisturizer which is only for acne prone skin that type of moisturizer usually will prescribe for example ceramide based that is like most important so we need to tackle both like uh, acne as well as uh, i mean the dryness dry dryness part which will happens some patient they'll tell only i have oiliness on the t zone okay so when there is oiliness only on the t zone so other parts uh, the dryness it has to be taken care of. so that time uh, like uh, we prescribe the moisturizer so coming to sunscreen see sunscreen what happens there are in the sunscreen also there are two three types of sunscreen one is physical one is chemical see uh, what a patient thinks is when they apply sunscreen actually it will uh, uh, closes the pores so the acne will uh, increase so that is actually a misconception so what happens uh, the physical sunscreen which contains zinc oxide so it is a, uh, it just uh, give protection without any clogging of the pore so that is why generally we prescribe the physical sunscreen so if acne patient if they don't use sunscreen what will happen is the acne whatever is healing it will leave a black spots when they are healing so that is why it is important for them to protect the skin from sun uh, as well as while uh, when we are treating the acne so that is why we generally prescribe both sunscreen and as well as moisturizer right and as you said it's important to choose the right kind of moisturizer and sunscreen as per your skin type so definitely one can go and consult a dermat for that as well right yeah. because many a times we are not sure about our skin type so is going and consulting a dermat is what you normally advise yeah so what happens see uh, there are so many otc uh, sunscreen and moisturizer right. so all sunscreen and moisturizer which is available otc it is not medicated one and it is not uh, see uh, it is not approved by drug control of india so uh, patient when they start using moisturizer they them by self that time there will be excess oiliness and there will be some messy it will be your their face will become messy so they think like whatever moisturizer doctor also give it will cause same thing but that is not true there are certain moisturizer which is medicated and which is uh, tested by so many doctors so based on that we we'll choose the moisturizer even sunscreen also there are so many sunscreen available even on uh, online it is available or what is it but everything is not medicated and everything is will not suit every patient so that is why always it is important to uh, visit a dermatologist they will assess your skin based on the skin type they will tell you the right type of sunscreen so that is most important right and, and many people, times people complain you know for sunscreen they say that it makes uh, i don't like the white cast or uh, you know it makes my skin sweat a lot or it makes my skin very patchy and dull and that's the reason uh, 67% of indian population is still not using sunscreen yeah. as a regular thing right yeah. and sunscreens are available in so many formulations so many information is there on the uh, you know tube on the box when we go out to buy a sunscreen because sunscreen is so important doctor and for the treatment or management of acne as well as well sunscreen is equally significant i would like you to tell us you know what to look for if we are going for a sunscreen what are the basics that we should check for and uh, yeah definitely which formulation should uh, we choose see uh, okay so this is most important actually see most of the patient what they'll think is uh, first point what i want to stress is it is spf sun protection factor mm -hmm. see indian patient for according to the studies for indian patient 30 spf will be more than sufficient but most of the patient what they think is uh, like as the spf goes up the protection will be more so that is wrong actually so india for indian skin according to studies 30 spf will be more than enough so uh, okay uh, second thing is uh, so you should look like uh, what type of skin they have so whether their skin is oily for their whether it is uh, dry for oily skin usually will suggest matte finish one so matte finish one will be like uh, more perfectly suitable for uh, people who have oily skin so some patient they complain they have too much dryness for them they can go with lotion form so uh, what is the i mean how many times they have to apply ideally say uh, the sunscreen it will it can give protection for like maximum 2 hours so i 
it is recommended that they have to use at least once in two hours if not possible at least morning once and afternoon once so next point is so uh, when they have to apply the sunscreen like when when they are going out of sun like when they have to apply usually physical sunscreen it will start its action immediately so they can start they can go out as soon as they apply the sunscreen physical sunscreen means usually it will contain zinc oxide or titanium oxide so second thing is chemical sunscreen chemical sunscreen it has to go inside and then only it will start acting so that time uh, ideally they should apply 30 minutes at least prior to the prior exposure of sun so these are the two things so yeah like see a patient we cannot like as soon as some doctor sees them we cannot like tell that this is the right sunscreen for them so mm -hmm. they have to use the sunscreen they should tell what is happening with their skin based on that we can mm -hmm. change and even like we are going uh, for swimming also it is important to apply the sunscreen nowadays we have water proof uh, water resistance and sweat resistant sunscreen also yeah these type of things. and doctor we would also like you to explain a bit about the amount of sunscreen we need to apply yeah. because many times you know people have various uh, concerns yeah. over it yes see see uh, when it comes to the face uh, we call it like one fingertip unit that is there will be one line like initial line so uh, this much they have to take for every patient, at least they have to use till this mark. This is called one fingertip unit. That much amount of uh, sunscreen is required for face. So for when we come to neck, it is like uh, same thing, one fingertip unit. So for hands and all, it depends like how much your patient wants. We are, for hands, usually we go, we tell patient to go with lotion form so that it will be easy for them to apply. For face and for face, yeah, it's like one fingertip unit. So that is the amount usually it is required. When you apply like a low quantity, you know what happens? Some area of the face it may not cover. So that time the protection will be low. So right. that's now the thing is, doctor, uh, when we see in you know practicality, the problem or the complaints again that people normally have with sunscreen is that see, it's a sun protection thing, right? Uh, yeah. It's a sunscreen, and my exposure under the sun is not that much. Or I just go to the office uh, in a covered AC car, and you know my exposure under the sun is hardly anything. I mostly work from home, I, or I work, uh, you know, on a laptop or mobile, etc. So my sun exposure is because it's not there. So why should I use a sunscreen? This is the usual, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, Actually, this is a very good question. See, patient, what they think is uh, my sun exposure is low like hardly five to 10 minutes, why I should use sunscreen. Mm -hmm. So see what happens, see the person who works like morning till evening under sun, he will get adjusted to that environment. Okay, even there is sun exposure, excess sun exposure, it won't affect him. The person who exposed hardly like one or two minutes, the uh, effect will be more on them. So that is why, that is how usually uh, it happens. Like most of the patient, when they come to my clinic, they say that they don't expose to sun like, only hardly five to 10 minutes they'll get exposed. That is the problem. See, when you when you expose only five to 10 minutes, the effect will be more comparatively. The sun, uh, whatever effect is there, that will be more. So that is why sunscreen is most important for them, actually. Okay. It's like and a reverse, actually. Then. And uh, because we are talking about acne and acne management, and we know, you know, all those who have gone through the phase of, you know, acne vulgaries, etc., they'll agree with me that treating acne is one thing and treating the pigmentation or scar that it leaves is another thing. And many a times when we go for their treatment, the doctor tell us that if you had used, you know, sunscreen while you had these acnes or sunscreen as a regular thing, probably you will never get the pigmentation that you know, uh, is there. So is this true if uh, we use uh, sunscreen on a regular basis that uh, then there is a probability we won't get the pigmentation that normally is there? No, madam, no, that is not actually true. See, what happens, see, it can only surf till certain uh, limit, it can uh, prevent the pigmentation. But pigmentation generally what happens, it will occur inside the skin. So that's what we cannot do anything. So pigmentation, even if you use sunscreen also, it is going to happen. That is for sure. See, but what happens when active acne is there, that time if you start treating it, the chances of getting pigmentation is very less. That is how we can reduce the pigmentation. Yeah, sunscreen, of course, it is important. It will also, but certain like limitation is there. 
Right. Song. And as you said, it's important to go and consult the right person, which is a qualified dermatologist, as early as possible. Yeah. But normally what we do, doctor, again, a very, you know, Indian uh, tradition is to try home remedies mm -hmm. or go for, go for over-the-counter medication or ask a friend and family. And we go to that extent where we can take the prescription of what our friend or family have and take the medicine and start it treating ourselves based on that prescription. So I'm sure you also get... Uh, you know, mm -hmm. patients who have done all this. What's your stand on home remedies or over-the-counter medication or uh, consulting a friend and family, especially in case of acne? Yeah. See, what happens, most of the patients, as soon as they come to my chamber, they'll ask, like, what home remedies I can do to prevent? Should I apply, uh, uh, for example, lemon? Should I apply, like, a floor? Like, I mean, some things and all, they'll soda, something and all they used to do. See, uh, basically, see, whatever food ingredients are there, they can only act like they can show their effect only it is consumed okay so okay. when you apply on the face it is not going to do anything that is the most important thing only what home remedies you can do is you can take good amount of i mean nutritional food that is the only home remedy you can do applying uh, some one patient asked me like sh shall i apply toothpaste on the face like for acne with it? this and all is not going to help because they don't have like i mean they don't have any mechanism like it will going to heal back there Second thing, OTC, like OTC, it is the most common abuse, not in the, I mean, at least, see, it's like uh, metropolitan city, they're okay, like they'll come meet dermatologists, but most of the, I mean, kind of village side and all, they start OTC. I mean, they, it's like easy for them to get access, like to OTC product. Right. See, what happens, most of the OTC product, what happens, it contains steroids, something called steroids. See, what happens, initially, uh, for first one month, there will be like, I mean, huge difference. Everything, acne will go, everything will happen. But after that only it will show its side effect. Well, like after two to three months, they'll start seeing the side effect. Most of the patient, they'll come with this only. That initially they tell like everything was like clear for with me, with these creams and all. And then, like later, later on, uh, they'll start like seeing the side effect of these creams. So uh, OTC product is never recommended. I mean, better to get consulted, like, I mean, meet the doctor in person. So uh, instead of like getting, I mean, without knowing, they might be... Uh, using some like i mean products which is banned for example patients sometimes they'll start using mercury and all they have started using mercury and all which is included in the certain creams so it is poisonous actually they don't know without knowing that they start using this this is the problem with the otc product right and as you also mentioned in the beginning when we were talking about and discussing the causes that you know it can be due to some underlying medical conditions it could be due to um, you know some hormonal imbalance etc so it's important to go and consult the doctor because they only will be able to diagnose yeah. uh, the cause and then it's important to eliminate or control the cause so it's important to go to the doctor at the very first place and that too a qualified dermatologist don't fall for quacks online influencers, etc. The doctor, what are the uh, procedures available for acne treatment? Yeah, see, uh, for acne per se, we'll start usually with medications and creams, whatever I told. So uh, usually uh, we'll choose a good cleanser for them, like for example, salicylic acid related. Okay, so then we'll choose the uh, gels like topical cream application, usually it will be clindamycin, adapalene or benzyl peroxide. Based on this, we'll start them. And antibiotics and isotretin, of course, like uh, it all depends on the patient, what grade they have. So this is like only acne treatment. I mean, acne per se. So uh, when coming to the uh, uh, complications with acne, so usually they'll get pigmentation or scar. For that, uh, in that pigmentation, what we'll do means usually we'll start, initially we'll start with creams. Creams, if it is not subsiding, then we get, go for procedure, something called peel chemical peel. So this chemical peel procedure, usually it will be done once in a month. So it all depends on like how many session they want. It all depends like three to four session approximately. So it will help to reduce the pigmentation. So coming to the acne scar, acne scar is the most difficult part to treat. So usually uh, acne scar, it will never get resolved with any creams, topical creams. So they need to go for procedures. Procedures means, for example, we can do CO2 laser. Also, there is something called uh, derma abrasion. And also there is something called PRP. So these things we have to combine and do it. So this is how uh, we'll treat them. Usually acne scar, it will take very long time to uh, get healed uh, compared to active acne as such. So this is the treatment protocol. It all depends on the patient, like what condition they are. 
again the uh, in the practical scenario doctor we have parlors who claims to you know do all kind of procedures we have quacks um, you know uh, why and how important it is to go to a qualified one you know, qualified doctor see uh, see uh, like you said most of the parlors they'll climb they'll clear the acne they'll clear the scar everything they'll do see most of the patient 90% of the patient when they get treated in parlor they will come land up with some complication once they start getting treated there they will get they will come to us like with certain complication for example peel so peel procedure the uh, parlor people will do and they will burn their face so they will ultimately they are going to land up in the dermatology clinic so that is why they are not uh, they are not like i mean their education level they are not like uh, what do you say qualified i mean they have not read about all these things it's like it's not that easy to treat they'll go right. to some i mean cosmetology some courses and all and they'll claim that they they are going to treat all these things but that not going to work we have to work up actually acne is not like a problem only we see on the face it's the body whole body we have to see like what is happening everything that is important exactly because uh, diagnosing the uh, you know root cause is equally important and you know doctors qualified dermatologists have given their life to uh, understand skin yeah. so uh, we should uh, go to a qualified one and eventually we'll save our energy our time our money and most importantly our health by yeah. going to them at the right place otherwise we'll waste a lot of time energy etc on home remedies over the counter medication and by the time we'll land up in front of a doctor eventually we'll have to but yeah. by the time we'll land yeah. up in, uh, in front of a doctor it would be a little late and the treatment will yeah. be ready so to uh, patient you know, try to yeah. patient <laughs> try to save doctor consultation fee but ultimately they are going to land up in a certain complication that is the thing exactly. that's how they are going to come back to dermatologist exactly and that's the whole uh, purpose objective of having this session so that we can uh, you know aware people of course about uh, acne and acne management and about uh, also the importance of going to a qualified dermatologist now doctor um, what to do for acne in sensitive skin see most of the patient i mean especially female patient as soon as they come up they will tell like their uh, face is very sensitive so i don't want to use any creams i don't want to use any tablet but be careful doctor with my skin oh. see but yeah we will assess their i mean we assess their skin like what type based on not only uh, we'll start we are going to treat i mean sensitive skin will uh, suggest them a gentle cleanser which is not going to harm their skin and even creams also we'll go with a very uh, light cream like not very harsh one so yeah this is how uh, we'll go ahead with the sensitive skin right and any dietary precaution any do's yeah. and don'ts yeah diet actually it is very important for certain i mean patient like when they are on acne treatment or not even like i mean in general so usually uh, do's means what they can do is uh, they can take uh, food which contains car complex carbohydrate for example uh, whole grains vegetables and fruits even they can take good amount of omega 3 fatty acid food for example uh, flax seeds and uh, even uh, for uh, for that matter fish you can take uh and also they can take good amount of antioxidant food uh, which contain antioxidant for example uh, tomato orange spinach so uh, coming to uh, what they should not consume means which contains high glycemic food which contains high glycemic index for example uh, you can tell uh, the sugar free sugars and uh, carbonated drinks so yeah these things they should avoid and even uh, consumption of dairy products should be limited Uh, yeah these are the things and a very important thing they should consume excess amount of water that is most important okay, okay. yeah right and what should be the maintenance therapy in acne doctor see maintenance therapy as such see uh, one thing everyone should understand there is no as such permanent treatment for acne okay right. so till you reach 30 to 35 years it will be coming and going coming and going like once they visit doctor yeah it will completely it will go and uh, patient will land up in some other dermatology clinic so that it has recurred so maintenance therapy what they have to means uh, they have to uh, maintain their diet i mean whatever i told and also some good amount of exercise drinking excess of water also certain creams are there treatment like creams which they can they use uh, regularly to control oiliness they should use uh, regularly they should use the face wash which contains salicylic acid so these are the important things which can they can do for maintenance 
Okay. I'll also take some of the questions that our viewers have asked. So Kiara Chauhan is here. Her question is, are there any alternative or complementary treatments like laser therapy or chemical peels that could be effective in managing my acne? Though we have discussed it, but still, yeah. would you like to? Yeah, see, uh, actually chemical pill, yeah, we can do when there is, when it is not resolving with the topical creams and tablets. Yeah, we can go for like chemical pill. For example, uh, it is a uh, salicylic acid containing pills we can do. Like that is also like monthly ones we have to do. Ideally, it will be like three to four reputation we have to do. When we do pill advantages, it will take care of pigmentation also. Right. A very important question by the Rohit John. How can I manage the emotional and psychological impact of acne, yeah. particularly at this stage of my life? Though he has not uh, uh, mentioned his age, but I'm mm. sure uh, he is suffering from acne. Okay. See, uh, most important problem pertaining to acne is their appearance. They'll be like, I mean, most of the patient, they'll uh, get into depression because of their appearance. So that is the most important, actually, I mean, thing related to acne. See, what happens, acne, uh, when it like, I mean, uh, when you get acne, as soon as you meet dermatologist, uh, they'll start treating you. I mean, it will resolve in one month. Um, you should not get emotional breakup. I mean, that is important. You see, uh, stress actually will increase the acne. It is like a cycle. Once you get stressed out, acne will increase. Once acne increase, again, stress will increase. So instead of like, I mean, just thinking about acne, why it is come up, better to meet a dermatologist they will help you better i mean right so to break that vicious yeah. cycle we need to go and consult a doctor yeah. okay shilpi yadav is here she, again she has not mentioned her age but i think she is in her you know adult and her question is why am i getting acne at my age is it normal for someone my age to have acne because we only know that only teenagers can have acne yeah, like, I mean, she has not mentioned her age though. Yeah, see, uh, uh, if she's getting acne, I mean, after 30, maybe like um, after 25, we have to evaluate her for like, she, if she has any secondary uh, causes, for example, PCOD or anything. I mean, we need to check her weight. What is her like, uh, I mean, mental thing. I mean, whether she's undergoing any stress or anything. Based on that, we have to see like, what is the uh, cause still get, she's getting acne. So nowadays, it has become normal to get acne even up to 20 to 30 years also. So mm -hmm. we have to see like, any secondary causes are there. Mm -hmm. Kirti Kapoor is here. Her uh, child is suffering from acne and her question is, what are the potential side effects of the medication? Medication, yeah. If if the uh, patient age is like less than eighteen, usually uh, we avoid try avoiding any uh, oral medications. Only we can go ahead with uh, topical creams that will help her. Like I mean, oral medication. If it is like I mean, if it is not resolving with the topical creams, that time we'll go with oral medication. There are certain medication which can which can be given for like even uh, teenagers. I mean, for example, thirteen years, fourteen years also. There are no actually uh, much side effects with this. Right. And doctor, we always say that it's important, you know, to take care of your skin or follow a regular skincare regimen. But the thing is that we don't know what to do. Uh, we end up buying like so many products, but then we don't know what to do. We keep on experimenting, but we don't know what should be the basic. So what should be the basic skincare routine that everyone can follow, especially for acne prone uh, people? Yeah. So very okay. So what is what is important is say like first one is like a, a cleanser. A good cleanser will always help you even not only for acne, even for age for age related uh, problems and pigmentation. Everything cleanser is most important for oily skin. We'll uh, go with like little bit. I mean salicylic acid containing. So for gentle, I mean for uh, sensitive skin, we'll go the, with the gentle skin cleanser. Cleanser is one important thing. Second thing is yeah acne per se treatment. I told you. Third thing is a very good moisturizer. I mean, we discussed already about that. And fourth thing is a good sunscreen. These are the four important things. Like, I mean, what like the skin routine. Like, this is what they should follow. So right. for, all this, for all this, like, see what happens. Uh, they will start using like OTC skin care. I mean, skin care routines. That is going, that is not going to help much actually for patient. They should consult a dermatologist. They will uh, suggest you like, which is the good cleanser which is a good sunscreen, which is a good moisturizer. Based on that, they can go ahead. Right. And we always say, especially in medical, uh, you know, that uh, prevention is always better than cure. So anyway, we can prevent acne. 
yeah see uh, this is a very i mean not a, a very difficult question actually most mm -hmm. of the patient they ask this like should can i prevent my acne can i prevent like can you give guarantee like that 100% i will not get acne if any treatment is there please tell me so see uh, we cannot like 100% we cannot prevent acne anybody any, like out of uh, see more 99% of them in their, I mean, right from their teenage to 30, some other time they should, they will definitely, they'll get the acne. Only thing what we can do to prevent is like, I mean, only diet, we can like follow proper diet, taking good amount of water. I mean, maintaining like our, take care, taking care of our mental health, doing some good exercise. These things we can do, but we cannot prevent it 100%. Right. So we can definitely maintain a healthy lifestyle, yeah. eat Lifestyle. Good. And uh, because we are saying that, you know, eating is very important. You also said that uh, despite uh, putting it on your face, on your skin, consume it, you know, consumption is important. But then uh, we feel that, you know, gummies or, you know, uh, vitamin supplements or, of course, putting it on our face, etc. they will work like magic. But uh, what about these gummies, doctor? Because, you know, they are so much in trend these yeah. days. Yeah, what's your standard? So, yeah, actually, uh, now what is trending is like something called biotin gummies. I mean, uh, not only for like acne related, uh, air fall related also, like uh -huh. should, they're going gaga over like all these gummies. Yes, yeah, so, so hair, yeah. skin and nails, that's yeah. their thing. See, biotin, actually, it is called micronutrient. Okay, micronutrient means you require only in micrograms. Like whatever like you want, it requires only micrograms. So you that micrograms, you will get it from food. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever food you are consuming from that, you will get it. And biotin as such, it is not a very important ingredient for air, nail and skin care. Okay. Mm -hmm. So see, most of the patient, what is happening is after consuming these gummies, these gummies, what has happened is it contains more amount of sugars. Right. So what happened? They started putting weight also because of the sugar that gummy like what mm -hmm. that gummies whatever it contains sugar because of that it started putting weight also. There is no scientific evidence these biotin gummies it is going to help for hair or nail. As such, well, come and no doctors are not prescribing this. Suddenly, all of a sudden, it came from somewhere. We don't know like from where it has come. All these like biotin gummies or like whatever. Yeah. So right. these things suggested usually suggested by I mean suggestion is given by in social media. And uh, right. the social media influencers uh, because ultimately they are endorsing these products. In fact, so, they are, it's, it is going to cause toxicity for patient actually. They are going to land up with toxicity. So that is why always it is important before you take any multivitamin, better to consult a doctor. So they will, uh, first we will do, what we will do is we will go with blood test. If there is any deficiency, then we can correct it. Why you want to take when you it is normal, everything is normal. Right, right. True. Okay, one last question from a viewer. So Hana is here. Her question is: Do some sunscreen ingredients carry health risk? Carry? So health risk? Yeah. No. See, health risk means see if it is a medicated one. I mean, it is if it is a approved approved one, it doesn't mm -hmm. cause any like I mean, it doesn't have any healthy risk. Certain OTC sunscreens, what they will do means uh, the. Uh, Patient to get some extra glowness, what they'll add certain health risk uh, ingredients. For example, like I said, mercury. One of mm -hmm. them. so that is why it is important like to avoid OTC sunscreen. And definitely, it has some health risk. When it is medicated, one absolutely no. Okay, and doctor, any closing remark for our viewers before we sum up the whole session? So, like always, like I said, it is better always you go consult a dermatologist. Don't take online consultation. Don't go for any products based on online suggestion and don't take any treatment by OTC or like when you are like after asking your relatives or anything, always it is better to consult a, I mean, uh, dermatologist that took qualified dermatologist. Nowadays, there are more quacks compared to dermatologists. Better patients should check their qualification. After that, they have to visit the clinic. Thank you so very much, Dr. Gokul Naiduji, for your valuable time. It has been a very informative session for our viewers and uh, we really look forward for many more such sessions for our viewers in coming times. Yeah, thank you. Better. Thank you. Thank you. And viewers, thank you for your active participation in today's session. Stay connected to our beautiful Spotless Skin page. Stay healthy, stay spotless, keep glowing. Goodbye. Have a good day.